Hello everyone, welcome to DevChoko Fest 2023. I'm Shilpa Shankar, Developer Advocate at SAP. This is week two of data, analytics, and AI sessions. I hope you have enjoyed previous sessions and took part in the contest. The topic for today's session is amplify your customer's user experience with SAP personalized recommendations. Kindly post your questions in the chat and it will be addressed there. I would now like to invite our speaker, Benjamin Tan from SAP to introduce himself and start today's session. Welcome, Benjamin. Thank you very much, Shilpa. And uh, I'd like to apologize in advance if I sound bad. So I was recently down with COVID, you know, and I'm now recovering. Maybe third time's the charm. My body's pretty resilient to it already. Who knows? So uh, hello, everyone, once again. And thank you for tuning in to SAP Deftover Fest 2023. So I am Benjamin Tan, an AI developer from SAP AI Business Services based in SAP Lab Singapore. And today I'm very happy to share more about how we can amplify our customers' user experience with personalized recommendations. So before we begin, I'd like to mention that this session is recorded and you have some time for Q&A at the end of this session. So please feel free to post any questions you might have in chat and I'll address them in the Q&A. Okay, so we have quite a bit on our agenda today. We're starting with a short introduction on our service, followed by a live demo of our service in action. And then we'll jump straight into some tutorials and on how to use and integrate our service with yours so that you can begin providing personalized content to your customers. But lastly, as I've mentioned earlier, we'll reserve some time at the end for Q&A so that you can address any questions you might have posted in the chat. Okay, so without further ado, let us begin with some introductions to what is SAP Personalized Recommendations all about. Okay, so if you're attending today's session, chances are that you might fall into one of these categories, right? So, but if not, let us imagine that as a service provider or retailer, how could we enhance the overall experience of our customers that are procuring our goods and services? If we are at a physical store, chances are that there could be a sales assistant who could point us in the right direction if we share a little bit on what we are looking for, or even better, if we share some of our preferences with them, right? But even so, the sales assistants would also need to keep up with the latest trends of customer interests, behaviors, and even product offerings, which is totally not an easy thing to do. So those who work or have worked in sales before will understand. So when it comes to online service providers and merchants, all of these problems exist and well as well. But now we don't have a personal sales assistant to accompany us on our journey, right? So how can we get our online customers the right products based on their interests? Okay, now we are transferred from the sales to the marketing and operations department. Right? So let's say we are having a sales campaign and want to promote certain groups of products or content to our customers. While we are able to tell our sales teams what products are on sale or what content is to be promoted, it will be a challenge to optimize both the campaign efforts as well as keeping customers engaged with tailored content. So as a customer, right, also imagine that a salesperson keeps trying to recommend content to you that are not in your interest just because they have to meet some targets. Won't it decrease your overall experience? So with that said, how can we drive our marketing strategies while also helping our employees or customers get the right information faster? Okay, now let us imagine that we are HR, right? Our administration that is charged with the employee growth and engagement or even career planning. To guide our employees for success and growth within the organization, HR will need to recommend training materials to upskill employees, right? Or recommend career paths to them. However, every employee has their own personal ambitions, career preferences, or past achievements. So in order to help an employee maximize his or her potential within the company, HR has to take all these success factors into account while also implementing top-down business strategies and objectives from the management. This sounds exactly like a very tough optimization problem <laughs> to us engineers. Yeah. So overall, I would say that we tend to take for granted the many challenges that service providers face every day. After all, the best performing companies tend to be very good at not only pro providing very good service and products, but also provide awesome user experience as well. In the context of personalized recommendations, the start of a customer's journey can be simply by being recommended a product or service that fits the, their needs, right? To even post sales or customer service. When a customer faces a problem instead of a simple FAQ page, what if we can give them uh, recommendations on similar issues faced by other customers so that they can get started from there. So not only that, recommendations can also be used internally within the company or anything 
to help our employees get to relevant content faster and more accurately, making them more efficient and successful. Therefore, I firmly believe we can amplify our customers' user experience by providing personalized recommendations to them. Okay, so what is personalized recommendations, right? So now it's time to introduce my service, uh, the, the service of SAP Personalized Recommendations. So it's a service provided by SAP AI Business Services that draws on insights from historical user behavior and content information to deliver personalized recommendations to our customers. So as long as you have content that needs to be recommended, we will be able to recommend it regardless of the scenario. It's totally generic. As you can see, we did learning, we did uh, content, we did even e-commerce, we can do a wide range of scenarios. And next, you're also very familiar with recommendations in our daily life. But what does personalized mean in this context? So personalized refers to hyper-personalization where each customer that has their own unique item interaction history, user profiles, or, or and preferences, will receive a unique set of recommendations. It's very easy to get started with our service. As you can see here, as long as you have the data, our service will handle the rest. This will be covered in the tutorials later. Okay. So, personalized recommendations has many types of flavors of recommendations to fit any business requirement. We have next item recommendations that recommends items based on the interaction history. We have similar item recommendations that recommends items based on similarity. We have user affinity recommendations that tells us the type of content a user is interested in. And lastly, we also have a smart search recommendation that's a search engine that is actually enhanced based on the user interaction history or context or profile. Okay. And in addition to the recommendations, we also provide features that allow us to tailor or manage these recommendations based on our business requirements, such as the ability to promote certain types of items while maintaining personalized recommendation results. So the word personalized here means something as well. And being able to filter our recommendation results is also a must, right? And lastly, and uh, the ability to provide insights into our recommendations through ML explainability. And lastly, being able to understand content that is not part of the training data is also good for a service as I will demonstrate later. So with all being said, our personalized recommendations service not only has the tools needed to provide recommendations for any scenario, but also the flexibility to manage these recommendations while delivering personalized content to our customers to enhance user experience, drive conversion while retaining control over your recommendations to generate value from any to all interactions made by your customers. Okay, so this slide is a one pager that contains most of our features that I have just described. But in addition to our features, we also have, uh, we are also very easy to integrate and onboard. So not only does the service handle all the fine tuning and optimization from a technical standpoint, like in terms of model training, we are also fully a fully managed service that will handle everything from training to deployment, as long as you have the data running ready for training a model with us. Today's agenda will also include tutorials on training a model with our service and receiving live recommendations from your very own personalized recommendations model that's deployed on our AI core platform. Okay, but before we begin with our tutorials, let me share a short live product demo on how we can use personalized recommendations to amplify our users' experience with a use case that most of us will be very familiar with. This demo will cover some of the recommendation types as well as features that allows us to customize and manage our recommendations. And for this demo, we'll be using a movie, a movie uh, content recommendation scenario to simulate a user that is browsing movie content. Okay, so without further ado, let me uh, go to my screen here, my demo screen. Okay, okay, so um, if you can see my screen over here, okay, in our demo app, we have some familiar elements. Okay, namely, um, you know, our item interaction history over here, click stream history, as well as our recommendation carousels uh, below here. In our top section over here, we can manage our inputs to the recommendation service to view the effects of these inputs on our recommendation results. So in this case, our item interaction history can be movies that are viewed or even watched. The first carousel over here, contains next item personalized recommendations, which as we recall, recommends items that a customer will most likely want to interact with next. So for example, if a customer has viewed items A and B, this next item recommendation, will try to recommend the next item in the sequence, item C, to the customer. Okay, so the second carousel contains 
similar item recommendations, which recommends items that are most similar to the item currently viewed. So in this demo, the item that is currently being viewed is the item that's the latest in the interaction history. So let's say if I'm viewing item A, similar item recommendations will try to recommend item A prime, A double prime, and so on. So I can see here I'm a huge Star Wars fan, right? So I'll start by selecting uh, a Star Wars movie. So as you can see, the recommendations show me some Star Wars related movies as expected over here at the start, along with some other movies that are popular for that genre or time period. But for our non-Star Wars fans, you know, they are still interested in the you know, space sci-fi genre. Maybe we can add another, you know, another similar movie to the, to the click stream. Let us watch maybe Independence Day. Okay, so... Well, I personally enjoyed the movie you know, as a developer, uploading a virus to an alien spaceship is a bit pushing the plot, right? But anyway, now that we have added Independence Day to our item interaction history, we can actually see that the recommendations are now tailored more towards our recent additions while also maintaining some relevance to items further down in our history. Let, now let me shift your attention to so similar item recommendations, which has even, even has Independence Day 2, right, which is a more recent movie. The main difference between the two recommendations is that while next item recommendations is more of a sequential recommendations that recommends items in a sequential manner, right? Using the entirety of our clickstream history, similar item recommendations uses only a single item input, which in our demo is the most recent item in our history, which is Independence Day. Also, you know, if anyone is wondering why Independence Day 2 is not part of the next item recommendations, right? The main culprit is actually the training data. So most of our interaction history data that we use to train a model is quite dated. And some movies like Independence Day 2 was not out yet. However, however, similar item recommendations do not rely on interaction history, but mainly uh, the catalog content, so or the items metadata. So the metadata refers to the training categories and tags, which are available in the product catalog that we need to use for training. So what if I don't want to watch you know, sci-fi movies anymore? Let me try to add another one of the classics. <laughs> so a lot of the rings, maybe. Okay, so as you can see from the recommendations, right, we can see a similar effect where the top rank items uh, recommendations are also tailored more towards the recent edition, while also maintaining some relevance to items that are further down our history. But by how much exactly? And how does content play a role in our recommendations? So we have many questions, right? Why is the recommendation service providing these recommendations? We want some transparency. And our service has an ML explainability feature that actually provides insights into how our recommendation service ranks our recommendations. So for example, right, let's look at the top recommendation, Lord of the Rings. So this is uh, pretty much uh, expected, right? Because we already watched Lord of the Rings 1, we want 2 and 3. Right, so as you can see, ML explainability has three main areas, namely the overall score, confidence score, as well as detailed score breakdowns by attributes, as well as context, or in this case, sequence attention. This allows our merchandisers to better understand the recommendations as well as insight on how to fine tune the marketing strategies later using boosting and so on. As you can see in the Law of the Rings, the explainability for sequence attention shows that this recommendation is mainly influenced by the most recent item in our clickstream history, right? So um, compared to maybe something uh, far further down the line, so this point nine, we can see maybe, maybe Men in Black, for example. For Men in Black, we can only see the sequence and attention is more spread out towards the older items in the, in the click stream, but still maintaining relevance. So we can actually see how these uh, item, how these uh, attributes uh, contribute and how this uh, click stream history contributes to the recommendation results. Yeah. So in some scenarios, such as like maybe learning or content recommendations, users can benefit from this feature where knowing the context behind recommended learning content will provide users with a better understanding of their learning journey. Right. So in addition to, you know, next and similar item recommendations over here, we actually have uh, three interesting features that can help to customize and manage our recommendation results. So the first feature that I'll be demonstrating today will actually be the boosting feature. So what is boosting, right? So boosting is actually sort of like to promote items with, some, uh, with a certain attribute or certain uh, uh, feature, right? Boosting is very, I would say, useful for executing market, marketing strategies uh, marketing campaigns by allowing merchandisers to actually promote certain items based on their attributes. So this can be used for a wide variety you know, of marketing strategies. For example, like 
Christmas is around the corner, I can promote Christmas sales items or like to boost them. But at the same time, maintaining relevance in terms of personalization. So clickstream still matters, the user's profile still matters, but we still want to promote certain items along with the mix of items. Yeah. So for example, I'm a huge Star Wars fan, right? Maybe Star Wars week made a fourth is around the corner. I want to boost Star Wars, for example. Right. Okay. So we can see over here, just by applying the boosting, you can see certain Star Wars items are already shifted forward, but a lot of the rings, you know, shifted backward. Okay, and so just by adjusting this boosting, you can actually see that in real time, our recommendations are being actually generated and actually we are pushing Star Wars related movies to the front, right? Yeah, so this, so we can actually see the and preview the effects of boosting in real time and intuitively realize how this can actually help with our marketing, you know, business our strategy implementations. Yeah. Okay, so next we have filtering. So I guess everyone is familiar with filtering, right? So with filtering, we want to restrict the recommendation result set to a certain, um, based on a certain, you know, criteria. And so we can use this for a wide variety of, uh, of uh, use cases. For example, we want to restrict criteria based on age, region, or even if you want to like on certain sites, you want to see like only uh, comedy movies in the carousel, for example. So let's say I only want to see all Star Wars movies in the carousel. I can just add the same tag, Star Wars, right? Into this, into this uh, filtering attribute, and you can actually see that only Star Wars is shown here as expected when we apply a filter. Yeah. Okay. So finally, as I've mentioned before, the last feature that I want to show today uh, due to the interest of time is actually um, co-start items. So co-start is a common problem in recommendation services, right? Recommender services, actually, um, where we want to use items that are not seen by the model during training, but we're going to use them in uh, while getting recommendation, right? So one example I would like to use is, let's say you can, we can actually see this set of recommendations right below here and look at a lot of the rings over here. So a lot of the rings, Fellowship of the Ring, you know, has adventure fantasy, maybe high fantasy as text, wizards, trilogy, you know, these kind of things. But now let me remove it and actually let me add an item that is not seen by the model at all. So a lot of the rings, something similar. So they can see the effects. That's the fast to show that this is not, you know, recorded or <laughs> So let me put maybe adventure fantasy, same tech, uh, same categories that we have seen in the previous lot of the rings. But also we want to add maybe high fantasy, maybe trilogy, some things that I, that I remember from the actual lot of the rings. Okay, so as we add this coaster item, right, we can actually see that the results are actually quite, quite, you know, we, we understand what this item is, even though it's not being trained by the model. So you don't need to worry about items that are appearing on your website that are not trained. We can actually use that in our recommendation to get recommendations as well. Our, our service does this by actually extracting key components of the Costa item, you know, metadata, the metadata being the categories and tags in this case, and approximates embeddings to produce these recommendations, even though the item is not part of the training data. And we can also view the explainability, you know, of all these. You can actually see that the Costa item actually plays a part as well. Right. This feature allows our merchandisers the flexibility of adding new items to their sites without worrying about the recommendation results, but also streamlining the model lifecycle management of our service. So in addition to cold start items, right, we actually also have another form of cold start called cold start users. So similar to items, right, cold start users is a scenario where a user just joined the platform and, the, and we haven't used this user in our training. So the model totally don't know anything about this user. But because a user has preferences, age, region, and things like that, the model can also use this information to approximate uh, recommendations for the new user, despite not being part of the training data. Yeah. Although, uh, but because because uh, we don't have any user training data for this uh, demo, we are unable to demo it here. But you know, just to put it out there, that we have this as well. Okay. So um, with this, we have come to the end of our very short product demonstration. And during this demo, we have not only shown how hyper-personalized recommendations can actually make your movie selection process much more, you know, enjoyable, but we have also demonstrated, you know, many of the features that allow merchandisers to realize their sales and marketing strategies, such as boosting, filtering, as well as any explainability. And coastal items and users are actually a way to bridge the gap for our training purposes.
However, this is not all that we have in store. I, I, of course, but we have much more, much more to actually offer. But due to time constraints, I have to end the demo here. Okay, so so back to the slides. Okay, if there's any questions, also please feel free to type in chat, and you know we'll address them later on. Okay, so I hope I hope that you found the demo uh, uh, enjoyable. So uh, now that you have seen that what our service can actually do, so the next question would be to how can we get started? You know, how, right? How can we get started using personalized recommendations? So we have prepared two tutorials that can help to onboard you in as short as five simple steps. So but do know that these tutorials are also available and we'll provide a link to you at the end of this session. Yeah, sorry, I'll put it to full screen. I totally forgot. <laughs> okay, so, um, yep. Okay, so as I've mentioned earlier, our service handles all the fine tuning and optimizations while training the model. And we have also, we will also fully manage everything from training to deployment. This slide actually shows the four main stages you will go through as you use or onboard with our personalized recommendation service. So in this tutorial, right, we'll show the two, in this first tutorial, tutorial one, we'll show the two main steps needed to train a model with us. And it's really simple. However, there's a prerequisite of setting up an SAP BTP account for which there will be an online tutorial that will, that will be used to cover it. So, but in the interest of time, I've already set up a SAP BTP account for this, uh, this session. And I have obtained my credentials to start using the SAP recommendation service via this uh, BTP. Sorry. I, yeah. Okay. Okay. So part one of the tutorial will cover the first two steps. So which are to submit a training job with our service. And this is uh, by providing both the training data as well as the job options, all right, which is used to customize our model. Next, after we have submitted the training job successfully, we then need to pull for the status of the training job until the job is completed successfully. So this picture here actually shows the Swagger documentation we have for our service. And the URL to access this Swagger is actually provided once you have onboarded with PR on the SAP BTP. So we'll also be using a similar Swagger for our tutorial. Yeah, right. Okay, and as I have mentioned earlier in the demo, the SAP personalized recommendation service uses three main data types for training a model. While not all the data types are not while not all the data types are required, we will need either the item interaction or clickstream data, or the item catalog uh, data. Either one to get started with using our service. So, because we understand that not all customers or not all stakeholders will actually have clickstream data collected when they hear about us, right? So to so we have implemented ways to actually just use the item catalog uh, information to actually provide recommendations while customers can slowly build up on their interaction history collection and incrementally improve the service uh, while using recommendations at the same time. Yeah, so for clickstream data, we need it in a CSV format and with the following headers. So user ID, item ID, and timestamp, these three. For item catalog and user profile, user metadata, they will be in JSON format with the following schema. So more information on this schema can be found in our documentation and help pages, which we will also provide at the end of this session. Yeah. And lastly, before we get started with the with the, the tutorial, live tutorial, um, we need to talk about model tenancy. So each model that is trained with us follows the, the this model tenancy structure, where each stakeholder will have one global account, as I mentioned when you sign with SAP BPP, right? for which you will be charged for the consumption of the service. And from there, you can set up sub-accounts and provision this SAP personalized recommendation service for each sub-account that requires access to the service. This will be covered in the online tutorial in much more detail, and it's a prerequisite for actually trying out the service. Yeah. So each model is trained with our, with our uh, each model trained with our service, right? We'll follow this tenancy structure of sub-account, tenant, and site. But these three components form like a sort of a compo composite key identifier that allows us to identify the model that is trained with us while allowing you to maintain versioning of your models as well. So how you utilize this composite key format is entirely up to you. There's no right or wrong answer. But we do suggest to have separate sub-accounts so that you can maintain the tenant site for different environments, the tenant site com uh, uh, combination for different environments, such as for maybe staging and production, to prevent the cross-contamination of training data used for both environments. 
Okay, so now that we have covered some essential information regarding the training the model, let us go to the Swagger page for real. <laughs> okay, um, so let me out, out tap to the Swagger page I have over here. So a few slides ago, I mentioned, I sh I've shown an image, right, of all the endpoints we need to train the model. And these endpoints are found in the training uh, section over here. But before we begin, we also have to, we also have a prerequisite, right, where we need to opt to sign up for the SAP BTP, obtain credentials to use the service. And we do this by actually having, uh, receiving a bearer token from our authentication service on BTP. So let me show, uh, let me get the, my token over here. You can see the token, like I, I've used my client ID and secret, you know, as well as this URL. All these three will be provided to you when you sign up, uh, when you provision the service on BTP. And I'll be able to get this access token. So all this is done live. Copy. And now I'll go to this uh, author, uh, author, authorized uh, place in Swagger and key in this. So the format is bearer space followed by uh, this token. So this token has a shelf life. So you'll find out more in our online documentation. Okay. So now that we already have this, right? We can test out our, we can test out our, uh, see if it works oh and just nice 200 okay it works it works okay so um now let us go to the training section again and for this demo we'll be using file upload okay so do note that we also have another option to integrate with our service that's much more seamless uh, which is to uh, integrate with us uh, by submitting your data submitting your data that is stored on your object store and you provide us with the credentials but for ease of demo purposes we will use this option instead okay so we we'll remember I mentioned about model tenancy. So we will start by providing, uh, uh specifying our tenant so they can identify the model, right? So I will use maybe Benji. This is you know, for me, and for site we can actually keep it optional. So uh, it's optional and it will be set to default by default. Right? Yeah. So the sub account is actually specified in the bearer token already. So you don't have to specify the sub account. It will be automatically handled when you request for the bearer token. So next down the line, we will actually upload a file and you can see here, I have a data.zip prepared. But before, okay, so let, while I upload this file, let me show you what is inside this, uh, this data.zip. So let me unzip it. And inside this data.zip, we can actually see that it's fixstream.csv and itemcatalog.json. So these two are the training data that I've mentioned earlier on in our, in our previous slides. And we will submit them in this for the training. And lastly, we can actually see that we have various job options, you know, that allow us to customize our model and enable certain features once the model has completed training. But this option are also, you know, explained in our documentation pages because there's so many of them and so many combinations. We are, we are unable to um, go through all of them in this tutorial. But uh, one of the main ones that I want to highlight is actually the surf model, which actually is the option that allows us to seamlessly move from training to actually serving the model. So if we put this, uh, set this to true, we don't need to manually serve the model. But of course, if you worry about like, you know, uh, runaway costs and things like that, you can actually manually control this. But for tutorial sake, we will just set this to true. And so just to recap, we have tenant, we have uh, data.zip, and we have our surf model equal to true, and then our barrel token. So four steps, we press execute, and pray that it works. Okay, it will definitely work. <laughs> yeah, so um, let me see. let's wait for this to upload. And hmm, okay. uh, moment of truth. Uh, I guess it's because the file is quite large, so it will take some time. Yeah. Okay, so while we are waiting for this, right, the next step in our process is actually to pull for the status of the training. Right. So after we was training an ML model, it takes some time, right? And uh we have to constantly monitor the, the, the training to check whether it passes or fails. Right. So in the next step, we'll actually show how to actually check for the status of the model over here. Okay. So while this is uh slowly uploading, let us uh, move here. So not to waste any time. Okay, so um in order to pull the status, right, we actually, same thing, need to key in our, our tenant over here. 
oh, this is really taking some time. Yeah, but once the upload is done, we can actually use it, right, to pull for the status of our training. Yeah. So these are the two steps. So I just need to wait for this, uh, this thing to finish uploading. Why is it taking so long? Hmm. Okay, but maybe while this is uploading, right, let me show you one of uh, the earlier models that I've trained, maybe an example, and we can show what a successful training looks like. Maybe I can show the October as something that I prepared yesterday. And you can see that the status actually shows successful. So I will show how we can use this to actually pull for our serving status in the next tutorial. It's kind of a waste, but maybe let's go back to the slides and hopefully by the time we come back here, this will already be done uploading. Okay, so back to the slide. So as I've shown earlier, it just takes four steps to actually start to get started with our service. And like, you know, cooking shows, right? We always want to, you know, skip to the good part. So the cooking process takes some time and same for training. So let me speed up the cooking time, right? So a few moments later, <laughs> we will actually move on to tutorial two, where we show how you can actually get your and customize your real-time recommendations. Okay. So as we recall in the tutorial one, it covers the first two stages of how to use our recommendation service. Now tutorial two actually covers the next two steps, which is more exciting as now we're able to receive the recommendations in real time. We can really check for how, the, how accurate are these recommendations or how good are these recommendations, right? And so I've also uh, uh, I also recall that we have opted for seamless uh, serving, right? By setting the, the serve model uh, to true. So that we can actually check now we can uh, now that we have uh, submitted the model training we can actually begin to pull for the model serving as well so this is a very similar uh, process to the previous uh, the previous stage yeah and yeah so this tutorial number two we actually focus on the next these two steps which is checking the serving status as well as to test out the real-time recommendations and as you know as a as a, as a recap we still we do need to set up a BTP account for this as well as train the model. Okay, so once, uh, so this this uh, slide will show, you know, uh, the Swagger page similar to what we've shown just now for how to pull the model. And for stage, for step number four, we actually have uh, inference endpoints where you can use to test out these recommendations in real time. Yeah, so without further ado, let's go back to the Swagger page and hopefully it's already submitted. Oh my goodness, <laughs> it's not submitted yet. Okay, but luckily, uh, we I have uh, prepared a model that's already trained just last night, right? Using uh, uh, our the same data that I've used for this uh, demo, uh, this tutorial. Okay, so just to demonstrate, remember that I've used the tenant, and we need to identify to specify the tenant to identify the model. We have that October first, right? And we can see that the this uh we can also pull for a very similar you know to actually check if the serving has succeeded, right? So because I've set the serve model equal to true, this pipeline will actually trigger automatically. Yeah. Okay. So once it has been it has succeeded, we can actually start begin start getting our recommendations. It's really as simple as that. So without further ado, let us get to the inference and okay. So now that the training has and the serving has both succeeded. We can now play around with all of the various recommendation endpoints that we have. And just a small reminder that you have to specify your tenant and site to start using this. So I'll use the serving that I have successfully uh, served uh, earlier on. That's October first. Okay, and we do have some sample you know, documentation here on how to use it. But in actual fact, you can test it out as simply as uh, putting in no, no uh, input. As you can see, even with no input whatsoever in the payload body, we are already able to get recommendations. Sorry. Yeah. So, and these recommendations are very similar to, and actually, or even I would say I closely identical to the one we saw in the live demo earlier on. So this is also a live serving. And just as a proof, right, I can show you the input that we have used. Three items. Coaster item is a, this item is a coaster item. So the ID is a bit different. And we also specify a lot of the rings that have to over here. So this is a live preview of the payload body that we actually sent you know, to our Swagger page. 
so we can, I, I, for, for, for ease of my of, of showcasing, I can actually just copy. So really, I can just pass in these three items first as an input to our recommendations. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Item ls. I'll really just pass in these three items. Okay, and the rec and the set of recommendations is already you know generated for us. But as we can look over here, not only do we have the rec uh, recommendations, we also have the status of the recommendations. So as you can see here, we have a mixed type, right? Because not only we have trained the item, so these items are actually trained. These are really um, Star Wars and Independence Day, yeah. And this is really a coaster item. But because we have not provided any information to the model, it's really invalid or untrained, as you can see here. Okay, so to rectify this problem, right, how to use our cold start item feature. We have this metadata and literally all I will do is just copy and paste this entire portion into this part over here. So you can see a lot of the rings that over first. This is what I've used in the demo, right, as well as all the categories and text. Okay, so once I add this, you know, added information into my recommendation payload, we can actually see that instead of invalid now it shows cold start shows that our model is really understanding what what this id is talking about and actually providing us with recommendations so just double checking just now 260 and three, now it's 260 and 377 but if i remove this entire payload right the recommendations will be a bit different oops sorry this was invalid train okay never mind let's see put it back Okay, yeah. Okay, and uh, next we can also talk about boosting and you know uh, other features that we have shown in the live demo. So we can see over here, we have a boosting that we have. Okay, so let me just add a boosting real quick. This is a real boosting. Uh, let me see comedy something something. Okay, just now there was no boosting, but now there's boosting. Okay, let there be boosting, and you can see over here. I'm also just going to copy and paste this part into our recommendations over here. Okay. Okay, as you can see here, not only have the recommendations changed, but yeah, we can actually use this to actually simulate what we have gone through in the live demo earlier. By changing this number over here, we can actually change the recommendation results. And now we can actually use this to actually preview what the recommendations will actually look like, you know, uh, as we use it. So merchandisers and administrators can actually use this feature to actually test for different various values of boosting. Let's say I don't want to boost promotion items too much to crowd the users, you know, feed. And I just want to maintain a healthy balance between personalization and achieving some marketing strategies. I can do it, you know, through this preview over here. Okay. It's really not submitted yet. Finally, so it took me so long, but finally got the training job submitted. So just now I've submitted Benji, right? Yeah, just to show that it really... <laughs> It's really just taking some time. My internet connection is not very good. So I'll just test out Benji over here in the training status. We can see that the training is now pending. So just some depth from the previous tutorial, right? So we just need to wait for this to, to load to train finish. Then it will, it will just trigger this automatically in the serving page. We just need to just start polling for Benji. So right now it hasn't started yet because the training is not successful. But as the training becomes successful, you can actually see this uh, move to pending stage. It automatically be triggered. Okay, so with this, we've come to the end of our second tutorial. And if while we look like we have covered very little content for the tutorial, right? If we look at it from another perspective, it really takes only that much to get started using SOE personalized recommendation. So it's actually a good thing, right? That's a homework. Okay, so back to the slides. Um, and yeah, as promised, here are some of the resources that you can use to get started with our service, including the full tutorial series, as well as documentation for our service. Please check us out. And if there's any queries, please feel free to reach out to our product owner, Steven, and our project, our product manager, Sebastian. Okay, so with that, we've come to the end of our slides. So finally, and uh, thank you so much for your participation and attention so far. And maybe, um, do we have any, any questions in chat that we can address? Uh, let's take a look. Do we have any? Uh, Shilpa, yeah. <laughs> Hi, Benjamin. So far, we don't have any uh, questions in the chat. Okay, um, so, then, uh, yeah. 
Okay, so I guess we will still continue to monitor the comment section and uh, not, if there are any questions, just reach out to us directly. And uh, yeah, with that, if there are no questions, I'll hand the time back over to you, Shilpa. So it has been a great pleasure of mine to share with you on how you can amplify your customer's user experience with personalized recommendations. And once again, I am uh, Benjamin Tan from Singapore. So it's uh, nice to meet uh, everyone and have a great DevTober Fest ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you, Benjamin. This was a quite insightful session, uh, especially about the personal recommendations. And you started with uh, the movies, which was quite, uh, quite capturing. So attendees of this uh, session, please note uh, that in order to earn uh, the points and move up in the game board, uh, you may want to complete the tutorial uh, for the session. A link to the tutorial is in the chat, as well as it will be in the description uh, in the YouTube and as well as in the event page. So thank you all for joining and hope to see you at the next session. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.